part two. Okay, so now we're finished our stud uh, with our normal dimension on the, the plane shaft there of 16 millimeters. And yeah, good. We are at, where are we? 16.02 millimeters there. And 15.86 millimeters there. So yeah, it, it's not quite cylindrical. There is a taper in it, um, as discussed during the last video. So the stud's done, what we now need to do is recreate this sleeve, which sits in the tool post and acts as the register. So what we need to do is have a look at the outside diameter of that, which is 25.84 millimeters. Or even better, we'll go for the bore on the inside here. If I can swing this around so that I can actually see what I'm doing. And that bore is... Twenty-six point zero eight. So what we're going to do is create the sleeve, the new sleeve, with the bore of twenty-six millimeters. Sorry, with the outer diameter of twenty-six millimeters, and then the bore through the middle of that sleeve as sixteen. I don't have a reamer. What I do have is I, I bought a new sixteen millimeter twist drill. Uh, that is a Bordeaux brand, Australian brand. So I'll be using that guy. It's nice and sharp. And hopefully that gives me a reasonable hole through the new sleeve that I'm going to do. So this is a pretty simple bit to make here. We'll see if anything goes pear-shaped like the last video. So we'll start by reassembling the tool post. I'm going to do this without the idiot background music. As it turns out, that was uh, rather annoying. Tool post, sleeve, nut. I'll get this guy squared off using the tailstock. All right there. I've also tightened up the uh, the nut securing the tailstock, so that shouldn't move about anymore. All right. And the other dimension that we have for our cylinder, which I just measured, or our sleeve, um, needs to be no more than 75 millimeters long. And so what we're gonna do is use uh, the rest of that uh, round bar that I used last time. So we'll quickly face him off. Using uh, I'll just use that guy because I know it's set up for the right center height. And 50 of probes, yep.
my power feed is still set up with the change gears for that 1.5 millimeter thread so it's running a bit faster on the power feed than <clears throat> I normally have but I'll deal with it Chuck a center in there. Sorry. First, what I'm going to do is just bring this guy out the 75 and a bit millimeters that, if I have it, 75 and a bit millimetres that I need as a minimum, and I've got plenty there. I'll throw him back in the chuck a little bit. That's what five happy days. So I'll put a center in the end, <clears throat> I'll put a center drill in the end, I'll put the live center back in while I turn the whole thing down to our 26 millimeters outer diameter. From there I'll use the, the 16 mil drill and I'll just take the whole thing through. I'll quickly change that tool back to the uh, the other turning tool, and then we'll start machining. Obviously there my power feed is uh, much too far per rev, so I'm going to do this manually. I'll bring you back when it's down to size. So I've just got one more pass to go, we're sitting at 27.6 millimeters. so this next cut needs to be 0.8 millimeters. Uh, the previous was 0.75, uh, and prior to that was a 1 millimeter cut. Uh, for a two millimeter removal from the stock. So my last two passes, the previous one and the one I'm about to do, will be about the same with a little bit of adjustment there. Uh, I'm actually doing this now with gloves and a long shirt and a visor um, because these chips are just absolutely caning me. Um, I've got the lead screw uh, turned off. Uh, it's out of gear, so I've got no issues with having gloves around a moving lead screw that's not occurring. Um, I'm just manually feeding this, as I said, the change gears, which I don't want to muck around with again, um, are set up for that 1.5mm thread pitch, uh, so the power feed is, is too quick for what I'm doing here, so I'm just going to do this manually. This will be the last cut, so I'm just going to bring that in by 0.8mm on the DRO. Seven. 
0.8 and then I'm just going to manually feed this final pass. So that one's done. As far as as far as surface fi surface finish goes, I'm happy with that. It certainly looks clean enough. I'll just give that a quick measure. And the big end is sitting on 26.04, and that's sitting on the 25.98. I'm happy with that. So what I'll quickly do is throw a chamfer on the end of this part. Yeah, plenty of room there. Throw a chamfer on the end of that part there. And then I'll remove the tool post to make sure that this assembly actually slides onto the part. From there, I'll start drilling. Days. So can come out. The tool post can come off. Get rid of that tool first. slides on there nicely. With a bit of persuasion. Anyway. So I'm happy with that as a sleeve there's a little there's a there's a little bit of rock in there um, but there's less than the original one. So next up we've already got the center in there. Good don't need to do that again. Got out for the Jacob's truck. Now, conveniently, this drill is just long enough to still have flute left by the time I get to full depth. So, we'll go ahead with him. The gloves and the shirt and the shit are now off because I'm not turning anymore. I'm not going to get covered in hot chips, hopefully. So we're just going to send this guy in at 300 revs. Um, it is a, sp a split point drill, so I'm happy with it going in just as is. Well, do actually is throw that, throw that cap back on. I don't know if this is the best stuff, but it's at the local Bunnings and it's easy to pick up, so I just use that. Alrighty, 300 revs, let's do this.
Now the fact that that's a brand new drill and the chips aren't coming out of both flutes evenly, I'm obviously no expert, but that says to me that uh, the tailstock isn't quite straight. I'll look at addressing that at a later point, probably doing a, a fair few things to this lathe at a later point, um, but that's what it says to me. I'll crack on, get more of the good stuff. <coughs> Quite a bit of pressure in there, the twist drill moved slightly in the chuck, twisted slightly in the chuck, um, and that oil is just boiling off immediately. So I'm going to give that a couple of moments to let it cool down. While that is cooling down, I guess I should check to make sure that this, this stud actually fits in there. And it does not. So I might need to throw the, I didn't want to use a boring bar, but I might need to throw the boring bar through there on a really light cut. Just to bring that down to the size, because even though I, oh, actually I'll just check this, to be fair. Yeah, so my thread portion is sitting at 16.18 millimeters there. So what I might actually do is, once I'm happy with the drill, I'll, actually no, I'll measure that first, but what I might do is throw this guy back in there and then just knock the tops off the thread there with a the file. That's all a bit cooler now. I can't touch it. Well, no, I can't touch it. So we'll finish the job and then see if that stud will fit nicely. Bring him in to the end. The drill's interfering a little bit there, so I'll give it a quick pass through the front section there. I'm just going to ramp the speed up and just slowly bring the drill through that front section there. Let's see if I can't get a bit of a cleaner hole at the front there. Uh, bring up to 500 from 3. 
some of the good stuff. That's the stud on the ground. I'll give that stud a look. So it kind of wants to. It really kind of wants to. What I'll do is I'll just put a. Uh, I'll just deburr the end of that, and I will just really quickly take down the end of the stud thread with a file once I part this guy off. So, I'll just grab one of those, that is just big enough. That'll do. I'm going to call that the bird. And the stud still doesn't fit. Okay, cool. Next up, we'll quickly reassemble this guy so I can part it off. I need the nut. And we need and we need a tail stop or the quill get that squared again like that get that fucker back in there happy I'm part this off at, it needed to be less than 75, so I'm going to give it 74. Now yeah, I'm using uh, that for my parting now. I was using high speed steel blades previously, having nothing but absolute dramas with them. Um, the moment I moved to this carbide insert part off tool, um, it's been an absolute joy to use. So what we're going to do is get that guy lined up quickly out there Get the old roller trick right there zero DRO and then bring it back 74 One, two, three. Come on. 74.03. Close enough. Just lock this guy off. Alright, I'm gonna move this out of the way so I can get in there. Wait, we'll go for, yeah, we'll keep it on 500 revs.
get the file in there. Bring it back to 300. Catching stick didn't work. That's right. Where is it? There's the front end. There's the back end. I'll quickly throw them in. I will. No, the chamfer's fine. I'll throw them in. I'll deburr the middle using that same uh, countersinking bit. And I'll... No, fuck it. I'll face it off as well. Use the chamfering tool on both uh, on the inside and the outside. That's why I do the job properly when you can do it half assed. Rev still happy with that. Bit of a squirt. Okay, so that's assembled. I got the uh, the top of the compound off. So what we have is the first stud that I made with with the original sleeve. That's the stud that I've now made again with the new sleeve. And then obviously the quick change tool post. So what we're going to do is quickly bash this guy out. to hold onto the key there it's actually half a key uh, it's one that I had on hand which was too long so I cut it down as you do so that stud comes out that stud comes out like so new stud counterball fits there actually real nicely so this Still needs the key keyway cut into it, which I'll be doing next. That needs a bit of persuasion, like so. Tool post goes 
on like so. Sleeve like so. And we'll see if that nut seats home. I don't think I've given myself enough thread there. Or I may have. I may. Oh no, with the chamfer on the bottom of that, I reckon that's perfect. Perfect as in just enough. Yep, that's free spinning now because that's not keyed just yet. But as far as wobble goes, once I get that secured down, I reckon, yeah, it's, it's not uh, a true piece of precision there, what I've just made, um, but it's significantly better than what I had prior. So as far as keyway goes, that's what I've done in the, uh, in the first one. Uh, six mil key, so six mil end mil, and I don't know if I actually calculated anything from the Bible, because why do it properly when you can do it half assed? Um, but it was enough, I think half the key. There might have been logic behind how, how deep I went with that. The key slots in there and then into the compound as well. What we're gonna do next is put that same keyway in this guy, in this guy, and then reassemble. All right, so now over to the mill. Um, we're gonna put that keyway into our stud. I'm just gonna do it with, <clears throat> I've got a 5C collet block here, again from Machinery House, because that's the only real tool provider which is local to here. So I'm gonna throw in, uh, where is it, there, up there. Up on the end. That'll give me enough room. Quickly tighten that guy up. This vice is still too big for this machine. I'll fix it up one day. So I'll just get that tight so it doesn't free spin. Come on. As you can see, it's always an absolute circus around here. Where is it? Come on. All right. I'm going to call that tight. That's the collet wrench that I made a while back because, as it turns out, hand tight isn't tight enough and I don't want to use multi grips on that. So I made that guy. It's shoddy, but it works. Cool. So I'm gonna bring that guy over here. And I'm gonna put him. The chief issue with this particular collet block, well, no, it's not an issue with the collet block, it's an issue with this block in this vise, is that to have that hanging off the end, we're pretty well past the halfway point, so I don't want to really kink the jaws around as I tighten it up. I'm just gonna bring bring him back into the halfway point there. Just there. That'll do. We'll tighten him up. Like so. Alright, this key. Calipers. This key is. That way. 7.2. What's that? 7.24 millimeters tall. So how I actually went about getting the depth for this guy is I took the, using a 6mm, because 6mm key, using a 6mm end mill, I'm going to bring it down on the centre line of course, um, just until the, uh, until the end mill is beginning its full cut profile, and then I'm going to bring it down half, uh, half the height of this guy, so that's 7.24, which is going to be about 3.62. 3.62, 3 
I think. So I'll quickly, uh, I'll get the edge, edge finder in here. I'll find the edge. I'll bring it down until we're at a full uh, depth for the cut profile of the end mill, and then bring it down that 3.72, 3.72. I'll work out what half of this guy is. We'll just locate this edge finder on the edge of the stud. We'll bring it in the five millimeters uh, to get the center of the spindle on the edge of the stud. And then we'll bring it in another eight millimeters to get our spindle straight over the, the top of the stud there. I don't have a DRO on this machine just yet, one day. So I'll bring in five millimeters. One, two, three, four. five and then another four revolutions of the hand wheel to bring us another eight millimeters in to get ourselves centered over the stud one two three and that's four that looks pretty good to me right. i'll switch this guy back out for the end mill using it a, a four flute six mil high speed steel end mill there because that's what I've got what color is that eight to seven is wrong wrong color the right color Alright, so we'll throw our 6mm end mill up in there, uh, like so.
Uh, because these are AR32 collets with uh, most of them have got a uh, two millimeter. Well, no, I can accept n mils with values of say six to seven. I need to get some individual ones at some point because this is always a pain in the ass. I'm gonna have to tighten the collar, collar up to such a fashion. So it's too tight, just to hold the end mill in there. And it becomes a fucking three hand affair. And you end up dropping shit all over the place. And I know I could just drop the drop the spindle down so the tool is resting, but that means I can't piss and moan about what I'm doing. Cool. That's happy. I'll tighten him up properly. Sweet. Bring him down, high speed. Bring you down. Bring you down some more even. And wouldn't you fucking know it? I don't have enough room to actually get in beside ah, everything. There we go, that'll do it. Yeah. Cool. Back down. Yep, yeah, I've got enough room now. Sweet. Lock him off. Engage that guy. Give that a bit of a squirt. Out. Oh. That wasn't even fucking tight. Amazing. Right, so the keyway's, keyway 
is now cut. I'll get a, a needle file in there to remove all that burring and shit. Um, but otherwise, happy news is the key does go in there. It will sit flat once I get that cleaned out. And then <clears throat> what I did, I don't have another compound to do this with, but what I did was mount the compound on the table. Um, using that same 6mm end mill, I started at the side of this bore, made contact, and then came in half the height of that key. And so at that point we should have half and half between the stud and this guy. And then using a, a needle files, I squared up those edges or made it loosely square. So I'm going to get that stud cleaned up and then reassemble. So that's in there now. It took a little bit of persuasion. Light taps, just get it in there nicely. There's no wobble or flop in that now, of course. That one can go. All right, so from here, quick change tool post goes on. Easy. Sleeve goes on also, easy. Nut. goes come on on big boy there tighten that up and there we have hold up what have I done here uh, okay That sleeve is slightly too short. So what I'll need to do... Oh, that's fucking annoying. What I'll do is I'll... Yeah, so the nut needs to tighten down on the sleeve and not this collar here. Otherwise, oh, you can't quick change your tool post, can you? I'll make a spacer to go... I'll use a washer, likely, on the top of the sleeve here so the nut is going to tighten down on that rather than this collar but otherwise yeah that's how I mounted my QA140 quick change tool post to the AL320G lathe so thanks for watching as I said at the beginning of the first part this is not the way that everybody's going to do it it's the way that I chose to do it, and it's actually been serving me pretty well um, on, on the machine. So, there it is. Um, hopefully I'll do more videos, or hopefully not, either either way. Um, I'll do more videos in the coming days, weeks, month or so. Cheers.